So this video is to go over the ratcheting mechanism on our flywheel shooter. First I want to go over why we decided to have the ratcheting mechanism, and then we'll go over how it's actually built. So there's a couple of primary reasons we decided to include the ratchet this year. So the first one is power consumption. So without the ratcheting mechanism, when you turn off your motors, the wheel stops pretty much instantaneously. And this means all the energy you put in your wheel is lost. Even worse, it actually gets put back into the motors, forcing them to continue to spin after you shut them off. With the ratcheting mechanism, we can spin our wheels up to speed and then turn off the motors and let the wheels continue to spin. And that way, we don't have to have our motors on all the time. And we can turn our motors off without losing all the energy we've already put into the flywheel. So we can spin our motors up, up to full speed and then let the wheels coast and turn them on again later without having lost all the energy we put into them in the first place. The other reason is damage to the motors. This could happen potentially at a couple of different points throughout a match. The first is when you're actually shooting. Because of the gearing between the motor and the flywheel, if you increase the torque demand on the flywheel, this has a bigger impact on the motors, which can cause a lot of problems. So if we put the ball into our flywheel, we immediately increase the resistance on the wheels, which means we need more power from our motors. So the motors are drawing more voltage, creating a large spike in voltage draw, which can brown out your motors or trip the uh, sensors in your motor that will turn it off. It also has the potential to suddenly decelerate your wheels, which could grind gears inside your motor. So what we do is when we shoot, the instant we shoot, we deactivate our motors. And that means that there is no longer a direct connection between the flywheel and the motor. And so when we shoot, the only thing actually propelling the ball forward is the momentum of the flywheel. And because of the, the loose connection between the flywheel and the motors, there's no way that it, the ball and the act of shooting could cause a voltage spike or damage to our motors. The other time you could potentially damage your motors is, is if you were to have your wheel spinning at full speed and then suddenly shut off your motors with no time to decelerate. So your motors have instantly stopped and your wheels have a lot of momentum they want to keep spinning. And so they're going to forcibly spin the motor and that can grind gears and it heats up your motor and causes all kinds of problems. The other potential time you could see this damage is at the end of a match when the field control system forcibly shuts down all of your motors but your wheels want to keep spinning and could therefore damage your motors. So that's why we decided to include the ratcheting mechanism. Now let's go over the actual construction of the ratchet itself. Now let's go over the actual construction of the ratchet itself. The ratchet is constructed on top of an 84 tooth high strength gear. The reason we decided to construct it atop the gear as opposed to the flywheel is the gear has holes already in it, which makes mounting and building on top of it a lot easier. So that way we don't have to drill in or modify any of our wheels. The center of the ratcheting mechanism is the standard VEX ratcheting wheel. The thing that actually locks into the ratcheting wheel are the pillow bearings. So the pillow bearings here have one end of them cut off so that they don't stick out past the gear. And the other end of them actually goes in to the ratcheting mechanism. They are levered into the ratcheting mechanism by a VEX rubber link. The VEX rubber link is held on by this shaft collar here. The shaft collar goes through a bolt and then the rubber link screws directly into the shaft collar here. We also have this standoff. The standoff is here because we are noticing at high speeds this pillow bearing would tend to fly outward and disengage from the ratcheting mechanism. So the standoff is there simply to act as a stop. In the 84 tooth gear we replaced the standard metal square locks that would grab the shaft with the circular free spinning inserts. This means that the 84 tooth gear can rotate freely on the shaft and will only spin when engaged by the ratchet. The ratchet is engaged onto the shaft and we've also added two of the metal lock jaws just to make sure we don't strip the plastic um, square inside of the ratchet gear. So this attaches to our shooter through the gearing chain so the motor directly attaches to this shaft and drives the ratchet wheel. Then this gear drives a 12 tooth gear for a 7 to 1 ratio and then on the same shaft as the 12 tooth gear is a 36 tooth gear which drives another 12 tooth gear for a 3 to 1. So the combined total is a 21 to 1 gear ratio and that 12 tooth gear directly goes to the flywheel. It's on the same shaft. So that's the construction of our ratcheting mechanism and why we decided to go with it. 